Here we're going to have a look at the Blackmagic Design Video Assist running the latest firmware. It features a high resolution 1920 by 1080 screen that's very bright and very sharp. It has HDMI and SDI inputs and outputs, although there's a slightly odd choice by using mini SDI connectors which require special cables or adapters. It records to SD cards but there is no cover on the slot, they just press straight in. The SD card needs to be formatted in XFAT and the cards need to be very fast. Check with uh, Blackmagic Design for compatibility, otherwise you may end up getting drop frames during recordings. The display has basic adjustments for contrast, saturation and brightness, but there's no fine picture controls. There is also no way to add or display a LUT at the moment. The response on the screen is quick, but like any other touchscreen device, it can be fiddly. There's an audio jack with level control, but there's no external mic input. The only audio is either via HDMI or the SDI source. To record, you can simply press the large record button and you'll see the time code moves and the audio levels are also shown on the screen. The codec choices in the video assist include ProRes Proxy, ProRes LT, ProRes 422 and ProRes HQ. You can trigger recording via SDI trigger or by using timecode. I couldn't find any way to trigger it over HDMI. It uses Canon LPE6 type batteries, the, the same that are found on the Canon 5D. You can take two batteries at the same time and you get a visual graph of the battery status. By pressing at the top of the screen you can bring up several video assist functions. There is a grid pattern, and there is also some frame guides there, so you can go between 4x3, 16x9, 2.351, um, etc. In the newest version of the firmware, Blackmagic have added, added a peaking function that uh, comes up in green. You can toggle between low, medium, and high setting. There's also zebras, which can go anywhere between 75 to 100%. The other essential new feature is a 2 to 1 magnification for precise focusing. But unfortunately I could not see a way to move it around on the screen, it is locked to the centre. There is a histogram but it really is quite small, you can't expand it to fill the screen the way you can with some other recorders on the market. This could leave you with some guesswork when it comes to precise exposure. Playback is very easy to access and very instant. To go out of the playback mode, all you need to do is press the record button and it goes back to the main screen. Another really nice feature is that the screen flips orientation automatically. There is a headphone jack and a power button on the top right hand corner and there's also a 12 volt DC power input jack for uh, putting in mains power. There is also a fan in the case that seems to run almost all the time. The exterior case is very well made of solid metal and there are three quarter 20 holes in the top and three in the bottom. The extra holes mean that you can secure it much more solidly than just with one. On the back of the unit there's a handy little kickstand that allows you to uh, keep it upright on things like a table. I did find there was also an issue when trying to hook the video assist up to a Sony A7S Mark II. The camera outputs its progressive signal in an interlaced wrapper. Unfortunately the video assist does not do a pull down conversion in the recorder and this has to be done in post. Yeah.